Good morning. I, I'm joined this, this morning by my wife, Nakia, my sons, Daniel and Joshua, my godmother, Geraldine Voss, my brother-in-law, Rashad Finner, and Mayor Lori Lightfoot. So I want to begin by telling you a story. It's my story. It's the story of a kid who began his life in Cabrini Green and later moved to the South Side. My family settled in Washington Heights. My parents loved us and set an example that continues to serve as the foundation for who I am today. They worked hard. They taught us to always do our best. They taught us to always do what's right. But like too many children in Chicago, I experienced the trauma of gun violence firsthand as a child. I saw how these unspeakable acts could tear a family apart. I also saw how those who were sworn to protect our city instead relied on prejudice and intimidation. So I could have easily learned to hate the city, but my family taught us to love it and they supported us. At first, I enrolled in college at Eastern Illinois University as a pre-med student. But a career in public service beckoned. I felt my Chicago roots would give me a big leg up as a cop. I know this city. I grew up around, surrounded by blue-collar families that are the lifeblood of this blue-collar town. I took the police test and enrolled in the police academy on the 2nd of May, 1988. I wanted to keep Chicago safe. This is my home, and it's the only home I've ever known. I worked my way up through the ranks at CPD, becoming chief of the Bureau of Patrol. And then in April 2016, former Mayor Rahm Emanuel surprised everyone by appointing me superintendent. Rahm Emanuel saw something in me that I didn't see in myself and I have led the nation's second largest police department ever since. I was appointed superintendent during a very tumultuous time for CPD. This city was reeling following the release of dash cam video showing the police shooting of 17-year-old Laquan McDonald. This tragedy forever changed Chicago. Trust in the police department fell to its lowest that I've seen in my 31 years. Officer morale bottomed out and likely because a result of the lack of trust that the community had in us. At the same time, CPD was working through a new law pushed by the American Civil Liberties Union that changed the rules for street stops in an attempt to curb racial profiling in the city. Violence spiked amid all that turmoil. The 2016 homicide rate peaked at a level that we hadn't seen since the mid-1990s. Now, some experts predicted that Chicago would not only get worse, but I knew we could do better. We just had to do things a little bit differently. So I began, I began by calling CPD's biggest critics to the office. I invited outspoken pastors, leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement, and the Fraternal Order of Police alike into my office to just simply have dialogue. And I asked them what they thought needed to change. And you know what? simply listening to them made all the difference in the world. I'll never forget this young activist who sat down in my office. And he took a deep breath. He looked at the pictures on my wall. He stared out the window and he said to me, I've been trying to get up to this office for seven years. That experience taught me that all people want is to be heard. They want their concerns validated and they want an opportunity to offer solutions. I think half of Chicago right now has my cell phone number as a result of this particular approach. I also reached out to other cities in search of best practices. And, it was, and when it was recommended that Chicago fall under a consent decree, I embraced it. I believe that the consent decree is an opportunity to create positive change instead of an obstacle to overcome. To move CPD forward, I decided to invest in manpower, technology, and to reinvent the Office of Community Policing. Now, I'm proud to say now, CPD has 13,400 officers, and 18% of these officers have gone through the academy within the last three years. 
So with so many new officers, it was important that we get it right when it comes to training. So we revised our curriculum to include lessons in procedural justice, implicit bias, responding to individuals in mental health crisis, and more. We also revamped our use of force policy to further emphasize the importance of de-escalation and mandated that everyone in the department go through training on the new use of force policy from new recruits to veterans alike. One of the most significant achievements of the last three and a half years has been mandating a continuing education program for every officer, which was not the practice prior to 2017. We ramped up our mandatory in-service training for every officer and will be at 32 mandatory hours of training in 2020, followed by 40 mandatory hours of in-service training annually by 2021. This training has made us and will continue to make us a more professional police department moving forward. Early results of our training efforts are in, and I'm excited to report, and this is one statistic that I'm incredibly proud of, police involved shootings are at, are at their lowest levels in a decade, down 80% this year compared to where we were in 2009. In 2011, this date, we had 91 police involved shootings. Today, November of 2019, we have 16. In addition to these efforts in manpower and training, the department has invested heavily in technology. We've added strategic decision support centers, or SDSCs, in 20 of our 22 districts throughout the city. These technology hubs feature live feeds from security cameras and advanced gunshot detection systems that rely on microphones placed in known hotspots. Now, I've seen officers in these rooms receive gunshot alerts, locate an offender on camera, and notify the responding officers who arrive on the scene while the offender is still firing his weapon. Yep. These technology hubs were made for the Bureau of Patrol, but they've expanded to the detective division this year through CPD's Area Technology Centers, or ATCs. The ATCs focus on gathering information for investigations and are now located in CPD's three detective areas. Detectives use these ATCs to collect surveillance video from a variety of sources, which can then be used as part of an investigation and later prosecution. The rooms cut through all sorts of computer formatting and proprietary software, allowing detectives to view any and all security camera video. The ATCs also give detectives quick access to suspect cell phones, providing location data, photographs, social media posts, as well as call and text messaging information. Additional technology has included the rollout of body-worn cameras for all beat officers and the purchase of more tasers, giving cops a non-lethal option when it comes to high-risk encounters. Now, te now, technology and manpower are great, but none of our strategy works without rebuilding the trust in our communities. Over the last three and a half years, CPD has expanded the reach of the Office of Community Policing. In 2016, we created the Community Policing Advisory Panel which was tasked with to reinvent community in the city. Now, I'm proud to say that we've, all, we've made steady progress on those recommendations. One of the first recommendations that we implemented was moving the Office of Community Policing under the direct oversight of the Office of the Superintendent. Now, my goal was to ensure that this office had the resources it needed to build relationships with all, within all of our districts, this move was also designed to help implement a vision that all CPD officers are community policing officers. We've worked to develop project plans for each of the community policing advisory panels. Additional recommendations have begun issuing quarterly reports on our implementation progress to the community. Only my wife could get away with something like that. <laughs> In 2019, we asked every district and bureau to develop annual strategic plans that were designed to jointly problem solve with the community around issues identified by the community. This process has allowed us to jointly problem solve. This process has allowed us to jointly problem solve with the community around issues of persistent crime that the community has identified as important. We are currently planning our process for the year 2020. Now, in the same way that I embrace community policing, I've also welcomed reforms to strengthen accountability and public trust. This is where I first interacted with a woman 
who shares my passion for creating a police department that the entire city and country can be proud of. Lori Lightfoot was the chair of the, chair of the Police Accountability Task Force and the Chicago Police Board back then. And I'm privileged now to call her my friend and now my boss. The mayor has also been a formidable partner to the Chicago Police Department, and I have the highest level of respect for where she's trying to take our city. I work on creating a model police department led to the adoption and support of a federal consent decree that was developed with and for police officers instead of against them. This court mandated decree has been in effect for eight months now, but CPD began working on these reforms well before the monitor was ever selected. We've been able to make progress against every area of the consent decree as a result of that. And I expect that this progress will continue for years to come and will help us become the model police department that this city richly deserves. Now, I have my doubts sometimes about our strategies, but the numbers tell us that we've been doing what, we, what we've been doing is working. It's perhaps best to compare this past summer to the summer of 2016. This past summer, murder was down 41% compared to the summer of 2016. And that translates to 141 murders this summer as compared to 240 murders in the summer of 2016. That's a difference of nearly 100 lives in just the summer months. That's 100 fewer funerals. That's 100 fewer sobbing mothers and heartbroken fathers. Robbie's also down 29% this summer versus the summer of 2016. Burglary is down 31% for the same period. In fact, robberies, burglaries, and auto thefts are, at, are all at 20-year lows. Shooting victims are down 34%. Shooting incidents down 38% this summer compared to 2016. Now, this is an equally significant st statistic as each shooting victim has the potential to be a murder victim. For those that survive a shooting, the wounds never truly heal. The victims of gun violence are often left physically or psychologically broken. So reducing these shootings in the city that I love has been one of the greatest accomplishments of my career. And it's with that in mind that I want to announce my retirement today. It's time for someone else to pin these four stars to their shoulders. These stars can sometimes feel like you're carrying the weight of the world. But I'm confident that I leave CPD in a better place than when I became superintendent. I'll help with the transition to the new superintendent however possible. CPD needs strong leadership. And I want the next top cop to continue making the improvements in public safety and in the department that I love. Now, it'd be disingenuous if I didn't say this job has taken its toll, taken a toll on my health, my family, my friends, but my integrity remains intact. And I'm proud of what the department has accomplished during my tenure. So I want to thank all of my command staff and the officers on the street for believing in me and instituting the changes that have been made in this city. This city is now a safer place to live, work, and play. And I also want to thank my family for always being by my side. They've sacrificed a lot. But mostly, I want to thank the people of Chicago, <laughs> because I'll never forget holding their hands and praying with mothers who've lost their children to gun violence. I'll never forget the hugs from strangers who thank me for bringing peace to their block. I'll forever remember the selfies of these small children <laughs> that reach out to me every day. Best leaders don't bark orders or point fingers. They lead by example. And I hope that the example that I've set inspires someone. Maybe another kid from the South Side. Maybe it inspires that kid to work hard and do the right thing and maybe even join the department. I don't think anyone would have thought that the son of Eddie and Octavia Johnson from Cabrini Green would someday lead the second largest department in this country. I've been blessed to have this opportunity. I'm thankful for the people of Chicago for trusting me with their safety. Very heartfelt thank you to Mayor Rahm Emanuel 
for having the wisdom and the foresight and the vision to give a kid from the South Side a chance. And thank you to Mayor Lori Lightfoot for being a trusted friend and partner and continuing that. So God bless CPD and God bless Chicago. Thank you. Thank <clears throat> you.